Hello everyone. Today I will introduce an interesting capacitive touch Bluetooth keyboard solution, which is based on CH5A5M. This keyboard can relay up to 48 keys input by touch. Next, I will introduce the solution in detail. This interesting solution was first proposed by Gig Ricardo. However, he did not actually verify this, this solution. We made some optimization based on his solution and successfully verified. This is the schematic diagram of the optimized capacitive touch keyboard. We upgraded the MCU to CH5A5M. Of course, the circuit is also applicable to CH5A2M because the PCB package of CH5A2M and CH5A5 is the same. The values of some components need to be fine-tuned. If necessary, you can refer to the relevant information of CH5A2M. The performance of touch key peripheral of CH5A5 is stronger. It supports high-speed USB and NFC. High-speed USB is not used in this solution. The future upgrade plan plans to add NFC circuit. The mobile phone can connect to BLE after scanning NFC without manual operation. For this solution, we mainly optimize its PCB layout because our touch key peripheral use self-capacitance coupling of detection. The original PCB layout method is suitable for mutual capacitance coupling detection. Let's take a look at what specific point we need to pay attention to when laying out the PCB. Signal lines. Touch signal lines should be as short as possible. It's recommended to use the minimum line width allowed by PCB process. Generally, the minimum is 5 mil and the maximum is no more than 10 mil. The spacing between adjacent signal lines should be kept at more than three times the line width. Otherwise, the interference between adjacent keys will increase, if affecting the touch performance. The routing should minimize corner if it can't be avoided. The corner should be 45 degrees or rounded. The routing should avoid being close to high frequency signal lines. If it can't be avoided, the two should be routed vertically. If vertical routing is not possible, a ground wire needs to be added between the two. For touchpad, place the touch signal on the back of the touch panel. Connect the touch panel signal to the touch pad through a via. This can effectively reduce the probability of finger accidental touch. It is recommended that the vias be located at the edge of the touchpad to reduce the trace length. If the touch signal line and the touchpad are not on the same layer, the signal line of other touchpads can be routed directly under the, under the touchpad. Do not lay copper directly below the touchpad, bottom layer. If copper needs to be laid on the touchpad layer, it's generally laid in in a mesh pattern, the recommended distance between the touchpad or signal line and the grounded is 1 to 2 millimeter. Next, let's have a look at the principle of capacitive touch button detection. The touchpad on the PCB and the nearby GND form parasitic capacitance due to the existence of human body capacitance. When a finger touches the pad, a capacitance CF is introduced which increase the total capacitance. The total capacitance CT can be expressed as CT equals CP plus CF. The size of capacitance change CF cost is approximately between 0.1 picofarad and 5 picofarad. The size of CF is related to, to factors such as the finger contact area, the distance between the finger and the pad, and the dielectric constant of the medium between the finger and the pad. As long as the same time is used to charge the pad capacitor, the ADC of microcontroller is used to collect the voltage value of the co corresponding pad and compare it with the value when it is not touched. Then, the defined difference threshold can be used to identify whether the pad is touched.
Here, we take a three multiple three capacitive touch button matrix as, as an example to explain the logic of software detection button. Each part consists of two parts, which are connected to two touch conversation channels respectively. Each touch conversion channel is connected to three paths, and the connection order is crossed to achieve a mesh pattern. After the chip is powered on, it will obtain the touch conversion value of each pad when it's not touched as a reference value. Even if it is touched at this time, there is no problem because this reference value will update after each scan. Let it gradually approach the correct reference value. Suppose our finger touched the pad in the second column uh, and the first row in the software. First, set the channel connect in, this, in the first column to the touch conversion function and all other connected channel to push-pull output outputting zero volt because the total capacitance of the pads in the first column does not change. The occurred touch conversion difference is zero. Next, set the channel connected in the second column to the touch conversion function because our finger touched the pad in the second column and the first row. The total capacitance of the pay increases. Therefore, when the touch conversion is performed in the second column, the difference obtained will be greater than zero. However, at this time, the channel is connected to three pads, and it is not certain which pad the finger touches. Then, set the channel connected in the third column to the touch conversion function. The occurred touch conversion difference is zero. Then, send the channel connect in the first row to the touch conversion function. The occurred touch conversion difference is greater than zero. At this time, it is possible to determine which pad the finger touch. However, we will continue to scan the matrix and finally process the, all the results. Then, set the channel connected in the second row to the touch conversion function. The acquired touch conversion difference in is equal to zero. Then, set the channel connected in the third row to the touch conversion function. The acquired touch conversion difference is equal to zero. At this point, all touch conversion channels have been collected. And the final results show that the difference between the touch conversion of the second column and the first row is greater than zero. Therefore, it can be determined that a pad in the second column and the first row is touched. So now, we pass to the uh, demo uh, real world demonstration. So, to start, you should to connect the cable card with the type C cable. And then, go to add device in Bluetooth. and connect HIV cable. Now it's connected. So now, go to the application, the software application here, and click Start. Now you can use it. And also you can enjoy the sounds. So that's all for this video. If you have any question, please leave a comment or send a private message to any of our account. Thank you for watching. See you next time.